Hi, Dr. Yas here. In this video, I'm going to talk about neck pain and the relationship of the distance between the ear and the shoulder. So for many of you who have neck pain, you'll seek medical care and they're gonna try to convince you it's coming from your spine, the usual stuff, MRI, herniated disc, stenosis, pinched nerve, blah, 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 blah. It's always the same thing and no matter what kind of treatment you get, it doesn't work, right? You've all experienced it. Everybody knows that the system isn't working. So I thought it would be wonderful for you to actually understand the mechanical premise by which you are having your neck pain, which is actually muscular based. So I'd like to kind of look at this little illustration right here. And what we'll see is that if this is your ear and this is your shoulder, you would imagine that if these muscles were to strain, which is the upper trap and the levator scapula muscles, that the straining would cause shortening and you would find that your e that your shoulder rises because the muscles are attaching from the shoulder all the way up in the upper cervical region and even to the skull. So we're going to see this rise. And so the distance between the ear and the shoulder is going to shrink. And you could usually see, especially if you're having it on one side, if you're having neck pain just on one side, you're going to see that this has occurred, that the shoulder has risen. There's literally a change in your shoulder heights, okay? So if we recognize that the straining of the muscle is connected to a change in distance between the ear and the shoulder, then we can say, well, can we change this distance between the ear and the shoulder? to change the pain that we're having at the neck? And the answer is without question, yes. How do we do it? Look at this big red muscle here. This is called the lower trapezius muscle. This is a muscle that attaches from the shoulder blade to the thoracic spine all the way down to the bottom of the rib cage. So most people would perceive this as relating to the thoracic spine, that somehow this is a spinal muscle. It's not. It's actually related to shoulder function because it's of its attachment to what is known as the spine of the scapula, a bony prominence on the shoulder blade. So if we saw this is the mobile side and this is the stable side, and we were to pull on the mobile side from the stable side down, what would you expect the shoulder blade to do? It would drop, depress down the rib cage which is why the lower trap is known as a shoulder blade depressor. What would this do to the position of the shoulder in relationship to the ear? Well, if you pull the shoulder blade down, the distance between the ear and the shoulder would increase. What would that do to the length of the upper trap and the levator scapula? It would increase their lengths. What would that do to range of motion of the neck? Well, if the muscles are lengthened, they have a greater ability to allow you to turn your head to side bend, to bend forward. And you would see an increase in range of motion as well as a decrease in pain because the muscles are no longer strained and shortened. The straining and shortening of the muscles limit their ability to support the weight of the head. So, Ultimately, what you learn about muscle is that it performs optimally at an optimal length. Anything that can lead to a shortening or changing of that length leads to an inability of the muscle to perform optimally, which is why most people are getting neck pain. What's the mechanism? Well, if you keep looking at your laptop or your phone and you're looking down, you are causing your head to be in front of of your spine, and as a result of that, there is a load that is created, and which muscles have to take that load, that excess load? The levator scapula and the upper trap muscle. So what we need to do is pull the shoulder blade down, which because of this connection to the head and the spine, will pull the head back. And what you would see by strengthening the lower trap is actually bringing the head back so that the ear remains over the shoulder so that there is no excess load and therefore those muscles don't have to overwork and strain. So if you're the type of person that's having pain at the neck, maybe you're having migraine headaches, you're seeing a correlated 
limitation in motion of the neck? The answer isn't to do chin tucks, which is worthless crap, or do more range of motion, which is the type of thing you would get at physical therapy. Certainly adjusting the spine isn't the answer. Getting epidural nerve blocks or cortisone shots isn't going to change a muscular deficit, a functional limitation causing your symptoms. And surgery would be pure insanity. So if you can begin to understand that your symptoms are a form of a mechanical deficit, a limitation in the force of muscle to allow you to do things like look down all day at your phone or your iPad or your laptop, then folks, you've got the answer to understanding how to make your pain go away. Here's the great part. If I'm right, which I am, based on 30 years experience in treating thousands of people, what's the news here? The news is you don't need someone in the medical establishment to address your symptoms. Stop thinking that your problem is medical. It's not medical, it's fitness-based. You have a muscular deficit. That's where you have to look to resolve your symptoms. And it can be done easily, primarily in this particular case, by strengthening the lower trap. How do you strengthen the lower trap? Well, you can go to all the medically-based people and all the fitness-based people, and most of them have never even heard of the lower trap. But if you come to the US method, well, my method is based on my personal understanding of how to strengthen muscles. And it's the type of thing I've been doing with people for, again, almost three decades. So if you want to understand how to strengthen the lower trap and associated muscles to resolve your neck pain, the only real place to go is the OS method. All right? So let's think about this. If you're having neck pain, the answer to resolving the neck pain, amazingly, is drop the shoulder. Drop the shoulder, increase the distance between the ear and the shoulder, allow the muscles to be maintained at their optimal length that are responsible for supporting the head and moving the head, and you will be pain-free and fully functional. That you could only get from the YAS method. If you have a question regarding this issue or you would like to make an appointment for a Zoom or Skype session with me so we can confirm that your problem is muscular and that we can get you to do the proper exercises to end this quickly. I mean, we don't, we're not looking at months or years here, folks. We're looking at weeks. As long as you understand how to do the exercises correctly, understand how to progress resistance properly, strengthen the appropriate muscles, allow them to do their function, you're going to be good to go. If you want that, then you can contact me by email at drmitch at mitchellyas.com, D-R-M-I-T-C-H at M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-Y-A-S-S dot com. If you like this video and it makes sense to you, give it a thumbs up. If you like my YouTube channel, Dr. Mitchell Yas, please subscribe to get notifications when new videos like this are added or when I am live on YouTube. This is transformational stuff. There's no question about it. Uh, I, I am constantly, I'm doing Zoom sessions, Skype sessions with people. I have people contact me after seeing my uh, YouTube videos or on Facebook and there's simply no question, you can't get this information anywhere. I, I, it's extremely sad. Uh, I, I'm the first to say it. But the reality is, it doesn't matter whether it's through ignorance, apathy, or malice. The reality is, the medical system can't address your problems because they are muscular problems. 98% of you, roughly 1 billion people worldwide, your problems are muscular. And muscular deficits don't show up on MRIs or X-rays. There's no medical specialty educated to uh, tr or trained to address these issues. So you just end up staying in pain because, unfortunately, you're having the wrong tissue treated. You're getting the wrong types of treatments. And you suffer. Who suffers? Does the doctor suffer when he closes his door at the end of the day and he goes home to his wife and kids? No, you suffer. So it's time to look outside the box and recognize that the system isn't designed to help you. You need something different. That's what the YAS method is. It's, it is completely outside the medical system. My understanding of interpreting the body's presentation of symptoms to identify the cause, which supersedes any diagnostic test finding, is strictly understood by me through my desire 
to understand how to address your symptoms properly, which came after I had my medical training and started treating people and recognized that diagnostic test findings are baseless and that the symptoms themselves are the answer to understanding what tissue is in distress, eliciting those symptoms. Three decades later, I'm still here promoting the same thing and getting more and more people to leave the system and come to the OS method. So please take the time to understand this. Reach out, reach out. If you're just questioning it, reach out. If it makes sense and you want me to help you get a Skype or Zoom session, reach out. Let's work together. Let's move this on. And then you become another disciple of the OS method and let others know there is a real legitimate alternative to what exists globally. All right. For now, this is Dr. Mitchell Yas wishing you a pain-free, fully functional life. Bye-bye for now.